Bob eats lunch at the campus food court every weekday. He either eats Chinese food, quesadilla, or salad. The transition matrix is below. He had Chinese food on Monday. A. What are the probabilities for his three meal choices on Friday, four days later? So we'll start there. We're given this transition matrix already. So anytime we're given a transition matrix, let's just label it P. And they've pretty much told us what we're looking for, right? So we want his choices on Friday, four days later. So if we're starting here on Monday, let's just say this is for Monday. Just for now, what would we want to do if we wanted to get to Tuesday, right? We'd have to multiply by, by another P to get Tuesday's probability, right? So if we wanted to get Friday's, right, what we're, what we're, what we're ended up looking at here is, so for Tuesday, this would be P squared, right? Now for Friday, that we've even been told here, it's four days later, so what we want is P to the fourth, right? And this is going to give us all of our choices given that we ate Chinese food on Monday, uh, we'll get there after we compute P4. So the way to compute P4 here really is, I'm not going to do out this matrix multiplication, but P to the fourth can equal something like this, you know, or something. However, however you want to do the matrix multiplication, right? It's up to you. You can also plug it in a calculator. There's a, there's matrixcalc.org. There's a bunch. Of, you could put it in. You can program a computer to do this. However, you want to find um, this four-step transition matrix is up to you. But I have it here. I plugged it in a matrix calculator, and roughly these values. Of course, they probably go to more than three decimal places, but this is what I got. You guys can check this at home. Um, but the big thing to take away here is we started with him eating Chinese food on Monday. So what's the likelihood that he gets to all of, or maybe eats Chinese food again on Friday or has a quesadilla or a salad. Um, that's all based on where we started. So just as I finish this up here, I'll dive right into that. And now, in red here, I will write right, C, Q, S. Now note, this is where we started on Monday, right? So the problem said that he ate Chinese food on Monday. So we're going to be looking at this row, this top row here, to get our answers. So. The likelihood that he eats Chinese food again, right, is going to be roughly 21%. The likelihood that he's going to eat quesadillas on Friday is going to be roughly 28, maybe 28 and a half, however you want to write that. And then the likelihood of him having salad on Friday, given, given that he ate Chinese food on Monday, right? This is the big thing. That's why we're looking at this top row because we, got, we were given that he ate Chinese food on Monday. So these are the probabilities for either eating Chinese food again, eating quesadillas, and we don't have to worry about the rest of this matrix. So that's the answer for part A. Now what are the long run frequencies for his three choices? Now long run frequencies for chains that are irreducible and aperiodic means that we're going to converge to some, cor some, cor some kind of stationary distribution or equilibrium, right? So Typically, that's denoted by pi. So what we're trying to find here is pi times our transition matrix eventually goes to pi. This is the definition of a stationary distribution. And if we want to find irreducibility and aperiodicity, we just need to note that all the probabilities in our chain are greater than zero, right? Which they are. From any from any i over here to any j over here, we have a probability of greater than one, right? So we're set so it's satisfied here. So this chain should converge to some kind of equilibrium given this definition, right? So all this is gonna look like we can denote pi however you want to denote pi, but I'm just gonna use x, y, and z. 
And then we want to multiply it by this matrix P, right? Which is a three by three matrix. And I'll just look at it here. It's 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0.3, 0.6, right? And this should equal x, y, and z. So I'm not going to solve this system of equations. If you need help with solving it, there's a lot of YouTube videos online that can help you solve system of equations. I will write it out so those of you at home can double check and make sure you've got the right system of equations. There's also system of equation solvers online, um, so you can put it in there. But the way this is going to go is we're going to multiply this vector by each column, and then it should equal um, whatever this vector is over here on the right. So in our instance, the x, y, z needs to equal x, y, and z. So this looks like so this looks like this. It's 0.15 times x, right? Now we're going to go down down this first column, plus 0.4y plus 0.1z needs to equal x. Now for the next one, we have 0.6x plus 0.1y plus 0.3z has to equal z, right? So essentially, I'm going down this column and it needs to equal this variable, right? Just like with the x's, I went down this column and it needed to equal the x. So that's how we set up the system of equations. Um, now you guys might run into some trouble and I'm going to give you a, another little extra hint here because sometimes these system of equations don't, don't come out the right way. But we'll get to that in just a second after I write this. As you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, 0.5y plus 0.6z equals z, right? But note that this is a probability vector, so it still needs to add to 1, right? Here are, here are pi. Here are pi is a probability vector, so x plus y plus z still needs to equal 1. So sometimes if this doesn't work out, then we can scratch one of these out, right? And then just use these, these three in order to solve that system of equations. Um, some, I'm not sure if this one, this one, you need that or not. Most likely you do. Uh, it's fairly common um, that sometimes these don't work out. If I'm going to do a, a video on doubly stochastic chains, and sometimes that really doesn't work, so. Um, and there's different different ways to different ways to get uh, this convergence to an equilibrium or a stationary distribution. Anyway, I solve this one here, and this goes to three and point five. So just double check your work here when you're solving the system of equations, and you should get this answer here for the stationary distribution.